Antel introduced uh, two new products, which people have asked about these, and Tony, you can give more of a uh, of what they're all about. But they introduced an assembly lube and a break-in oil. What do you use assembly lube for, Tony? Well, when you're building a performance motor, or any kind of motor, really, you want to protect it against that initial startup. So as you're laying in the crankshaft and putting lube on the bearing surfaces, before you tighten it down, the cam and the lifters you mentioned, the timing chains, push rods, all that. So it's a it's a thick enough lube that'll stay on there because some of these guys build motors and the guys don't put them in until months later or it's a fly shop. So you gotta have something that'll stay on the the metal before it's fired off the first time. Now so Anvil decided that they wanted to have assembly lube because they want it from the time that engine builders put it together to the next oil they came out with and introduced, which is break-in oil. And so now it's in the warehouse. They have break-in oil available for when a person uh, builds one of these engines and they put the break-in oil in. Now, break-in oil is an interesting product because it's kind of the way they talked about it and explained it is it's got to allow wear in certain amount of places, but it's also got to protect other places. So, kind of a complex additive package because they want it to allow uh, adequate ring wear so that you get a good <coughs> seat of the rings, but while you're doing that, they don't want it to wear out the camshaft, you know. So, yeah, George, go ahead. Or the, the, that crank or the cam. Right, exactly. So, you got to make a, this, Breaking oil is a little more complex than just going out there and buying marble mystery oil and pouring it in there and deciding that'll do the breaking, okay? It's a little complex, but they made it, it's available. It's really a petroleum-based oil. There's no sense of trying to waste a synthetic base stock to make a break-in oil. But it's got an additive package in it which is designed to let you break in without wearing out, if that makes sense. I want to break it in, but I don't want to wear it out while I'm breaking it in, so it works. So here Angel said, we want to be involved when you when you lube it to put it together, we want to be involved whenever you break it in, and then we're going to have Z-Rod oil or racing oil or high-performance standard oils, whatever you want to go into it after you've seated the ring and broken in. So pretty good intent on their purpose, which is to say we can take it from the time you start assembling the parts until you're out there waiting on that Christmas tree lights to light up and head down the track. So you they said that when they sponsored that Popper Hot Riding Engine Masters, you know, where they bring in all these engine builders from all over the country and whoever makes the most horsepower wins. Well, they found just what Dan mentioned that whoever's in there first in that break in oil stays in their brand. And that's why we couldn't get many people to run our stuff because we weren't in there in the beginning. So that product was a necessity of making sure that engine builder gets us in there in the beginning. So, again, uh, are we all going to run out and make a fortune on assembly lube or break-in oil or Z-Rod oil? But like John said, they're giving us the oils to match up with the niche so that if we can stumble into a place where we have this niche, we're actually prepared to deal with it. We're actually prepared to say, oh, you're a, you're a well-known engine builder. You build a lot of engines. There's a guy I need to go talk to right up there south of Ocala. And the thing is, we can say, well, okay, look, here's some information. You build engines for all these guys. Take a look at this. We got the lube, we got the brake in, and then we got the high performance racing. So we can provide for you. You manufacture these engines. You can uh, sell the engine to the guys and give them the lube. And by the way, maybe you'd like to be a dealer. Because if you become a dealer as an engine builder, then every one of these guys you sell an engine to has got a race car. You can hook them up either as dealers, preferred customers, or even commercial accounts as a racing team, and you just have another revenue stream that comes to you that all you had to do was exercise your position as the engine builder and make the recommendation, and now you close the loop and you make money off of the lubricant for this engine that you've built and provided. So it's a niche, but it's a door opener that allows us to try to expand inside that niche rather than just sell two quarts of oil. What we're really looking for is where can I find an engine builder that wants to be a dealer? Because now I can give him a, a, a lube, you know, an assembly lube, a braking oil, and racing oil at the track. And if he's a smart guy, 
if he hooks up as that, he becomes one of your good online dealers because he's selling to the racing community of which we don't always have a lot of contact with. Now, Tony has contact in the high performance market. He, for a, a warehousing company he works for, they handle these speed shops and places and go around. So now Tony goes to those guys and say, hey, got another product. You know? And that's one of the things that we need to think about more and more is how in our existing customer base we can have more products. Because one of the things when you read all the big sales books, it says never forget your, what they call internal customers, the ones you already have. We're all so busy and Amazon promotes it going out trying to find new customers. Sometimes we forget about how to develop our existing customers to use more and sell more of the existing products that we got. And that's why when Amazon comes out with a new product, we have to look and say, where can that work inside the customers I've already got? 